Hello, lovely ones. Another time, another story of my life. This one is more about graduating. I kind of always had the dream that I would get a PhD. And there was a time when I, I did write applications and I actually tried and it always felt like the possible universities or professors, they were trying to redirect me in another way. And it didn't feel like this was my path. I couldn't really put my finger in it and I couldn't really say why I didn't want to do that, but it just didn't happen. So sometimes that voice within can be in a different way. So on one hand, I could say failure. Okay, I was a non-academic. I didn't do a uh, undergraduate and then straight into a master's. I was at university. I lectured. I did research. I did everything. Much of an autodidact, but yet I also had, of course, many other people in my environment that supported me. But I didn't go the ordinary path and I don't have a PhD. And yet the, the metaphor um, of graduation and, and doctorate, it still kind of lingers. And so this, this story is about once upon a time when Patrick had a chance to graduate beyond the failure and beyond the labels that I perceived. So this one was actually, and I'm trying to show this now to you. I don't, you can see it. There's a mark here. It's in the shape of an eye. And that mark is Iota or Fleischmannia. Fleischmannia, Fleischmannia, that's the right word. So it's actually an illness. Now, I have been very blessed with vitality and well-being. I had very, very little illnesses, hardly any accidents. I have lived a very good life in that sense. Yes, I do a lot in regards of vital food, not much into supplements. I don't take any medications. Um, yeah, so when this Uta came, it was interesting because it was like, did you really walk the talk? It was about coming into another level of integrity, breaking the labels and the identity and fully letting go. So when Uta came and was diagnosed, what doctors, even those who are a little bit more holistic, recommend is actually that you take 28 days of uh, injection. And that injection is a chemotherapy kind of thing. So at this point, I haven't taken any medication for more than 12, 14 years. And I surely didn't want to go back. So it was a challenge because, of course, Fleischmannia could kill you. You could, this never heals, you know, this could lose your arm, all kind of horror stories. So it is a situation where not you're fighting fear, but you're meeting really fear on a very existential level. And... I understood it was a journey that I had chosen not to fight with the parasite, but to find a way to really eliminate it. So not feeding it physically, mentally, emotionally. Yes, I changed even more to a diet, which I usually don't do, but I took a diet that didn't feed it. So there's a particular protein 
that feeds it. So I stopped that. I put different things on it. I cleansed my body in another way. I came across very different modalities, including, of course, energy healing, my own sound. I did not go on the mind trying to control this illness or sickness or whatever you want to call it. I allowed the healing from within. I used my crystals. I used energy. There was many others, beautiful friends who supported me. Eventually, I also went on the um, Lapacho or Pau di Arco, which is from a bark inside the bark of a tree that also grows here, by the way, in the region for the final cleanse. And it took about five or six months. So this was really a time to stand fully in my integrity, to go through fear and panic attacks and whatever you can imagine. The interesting thing about this is you're not really feeling sick physically, but I had to look at it all the time. And of course, the eye reflects to how do you see the world? So why do I see that as a, a graduation or my PhD? It's my PhD in integrity. It's my PhD in walking my path, being honest. Not to fight. I didn't feel I was on a fight with that parasite. I, I even didn't feel like I was trying to kill it. It was more like I went into this process to really release it. And at this time, of course, there's a lot of entanglement that came up. So identities I thought I had burned a long time ago in my shamanic work. There was more to burn. More letting go to do on the super conscious or the heart conscious, the I am, who am I? I was reminded, of course, of my silent retreat I had taken in Mexico many, many years ago. And everything kind of came together. Even the healing with my mother, chronologically before that time, truly enabled that story. The blessing to live with her stopped my life, stopped our our business for years, although we didn't live with her physically all the time, but to come back into that love. Beyond the mindset, I tell myself that I'm okay with my mother. It was much more than that. It was really going beyond and allowing to walk my talk to understand my mother and see her role in my life. That was very beautiful. I wouldn't have that nature connection without her. That everybody is on their own journey and everybody has their own challenges. That is life. But it feels like the ability to graduate and get the PhD, not in Uta, not in the Leishmania, but in walking on my talk and being in integrity to prepare myself to really share these gifts that have been cultivated and nurtured over many lifetimes, to bring them to play and to light. The foundation was really that reconciliation in love that was the, the, the earth, the prepared earth for allowing this to happen. So quite a lot of things came along with that. The story to be broken was obviously the labels again. The integrity to really walk that talk. I always said you can't fight a disease. But when you are in that moment of fear, it's easy to fight. And it's easy to be the victim. And it was interesting. I knew I had graduated from being the victim because I didn't feel like I was the victim. I just felt it's part of the story. 
I didn't feel it was bad luck. I wasn't upset with whatever created it. It was really just about walking my talk. And without that beautiful earth and that fertilization of having that love with my mother, it wouldn't have been possible. So it's in a way also that experience of the Hopopono. Beyond the, I forgive you, I'm sorry, I love you, but in the acceptance of the role that we play with the acceptance of the energy we put in situations without judgment or fear or condemnation and the ability to see beyond that. So on the animal that came to me here that I'm very familiar with and it's also interesting in the context we had a beautiful beautiful bird an agaporton her name was Nali, and we brought her here into the jungle. We actually bought her for the nephew, and that didn't work out, and she didn't get a partner, and we were, well, I, I was really her main partner in that sense. They are quite couple-oriented, and she was just extraordinary on all levels, and Nali passed very shortly after we returned from five months of lockdown in Lima. And of course, it's very natural for Agapornis to pass when they are not with their companion. But still, of course, it was a very tough time to lose her. To be with her until her last breath was a gift. And as we did all of her ceremonies, it was very funny because she transformed into a phoenix. So I knew this happened shortly before the Uta. Synchronicity is, is always incredible. And the phoenix, of course, was symbolic for all the things that we let go, including including, of course, letting go Nali, who was such a, a beautiful part of our lives. And that companionship I had with her was out of this world. She wasn't the kind of maybe Akaponi that other people have, but she was just Nali. And she became the phoenix. At this time, we, we did a lot of burning of identity until our name and all of that, so very shamanic. And so the Uta and the Phoenix in that case, the story of, of, uh, of Nali was very significant. It is really dying to all the labels and all the fears of fixing the external fix that I've ever carried with me. So, as I was rising into that new one, that colorful bird, it was more, I was rising into my true self. It was a graduation from burning and letting go of all the labels and identities, the entrapment and enslavement and the entanglement. So in a way, that phoenix that came to me as a spirit animal was in a way the conclusion of that test, of that graduation of my PhD that doesn't have a title, but of course a new die to the labels and identities that you are carrying in this life. And a lot to the mind control, even if you are a man of the heart, then these kind of things tend to happen. So I am very grateful for the story in my life. And it brings quite a lot of things together for me. So again, I'm inviting you to share.
share with me? What does it trigger in you? What labels did you let go? What signs do you see beyond your experience? And so, again, thank you very much for being here on this third story beyond.